Um, I just want to start with offering my condolences because I heard that one of your colleagues passed away. So I was really sorry to hear to hear that, and and yeah, I want to offer my condolences. All right. Okay, we'll get started. I'll start with the first question, then just raise your hand, eager. A very tough battle and a big comeback. Just talk us through your thoughts, especially in that third set today. Well, um, there were many thoughts. Um, for sure, yeah, I, I didn't feel like I had, you know, control over this match, but I wanted to, you know, fight till the end, and I knew that, um, as I said on the post-match um, interview, it's hard for anybody to keep, you know, that level that Daniel showed, you know, in the second set. And at the beginning of the third, so I just wanted to be ready whenever I had a chance to come back and to, um, yeah, just just play a little bit more because there weren't you know many rallies. She she really uh, she was really aggressive, and I wanted to do the same. But uh, f um, in second set, for sure, she showed better quality. So I'm happy that I was solid and I just believed till the end. Okay, who'd like the first question? Um, back up there and then over there. Yep. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. What's your main takeaway from this? Are you sort of uh, obviously thrilled that you came back, or do you sort of think in terms of ahead to the next match and what you need to improve? What what is it? What is it you pinpoint that you could you need to improve to to, to, to progress further? Well, I don't know if I can improve. I mean, I always you know try, but it's hard to know if you can actually improve something um, during you know only like one hour of practice that I'm going to have tomorrow. So um, honestly, I feel like it's all about you know momentum, and uh, she played really well. I mean, it's not like I'm kind of just um, explaining why I lost you know the set and I was in trouble, but I felt like she played really well, and I did everything I could, and I would say the same if I would lose. So um, for the next match, I'm just gonna you know kind of start from the beginning. It's another round, and um, and yeah. Fight, no matter what. <laughs> okay, we've got over here, and then to Matt. Uh, yeah. uh, hi, um, I, was, I noticed that you were wearing uh, headphones when you entered the arena today, and I was wondering what song you were listening to, and uh, what artists you usually listen to before a match, and what you want the music to, to give you in that situation. Well, uh, I was listening to the Rolling Stones, and um, I... I feel like when I'm really well focused, I'm kind of repeating the same song throughout the whole match. And um, I'm, yeah, I mean, it gives me energy and I can kind of narrow my focus just to um, that song that I keep hearing and the technical stuff that I want to think about. So, yeah, I don't like when my brain is kind of picking up the songs from the changeovers because every time it's a different one. So I want to keep, yeah, hearing Fear of the Rolling Stones. Which song? Do you know, remember which song by Rolling Stones? I don't want to say, because I I already said a couple of times and like it became like the anthem of the tournament or whatever, and it li ruined it a little bit for me. So I don't want to say. I mean, I had it on, on my first round, Garros, that I won. Um, Welcome to the Jungle. Like, I couldn't even hear it ever again because of all this fuss that this song made. So yeah. Okay, we'll go Matt, then Nick, Ben, John. Matt? Uh, um, it, it looked like there was a, for a stretch in the second set and then early in the third set, you were just having a lot of trouble controlling your forehand, and then all of a sudden you stopped having trouble controlling your forehand. And was, <laughs> is there some adjustment, or is it just come and go by chance? I mean, what, what happened there? Well, I tried to, you know, I tried to do the right movement and um, I keep my hand fast, you know, no matter what. Sometimes it went in, some, sometimes not. Um, I know that I still have many things to improve in my forehand, um, as in, you know, other shots. For sure, yeah, it didn't work on some during some part of the match. Uh, I can't tell you why it clicked. Maybe, you know, it's 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 really you know different different factors maybe she played a little bit slower maybe i had it you know closer whatever like sometimes it's the momentum changes and then it's easier so but for sure i would say uh, in second set i was overall you know a little bit frustrated so also it didn't help um and in third i came back to my normal kind of focus okay nick um she's a really intense uh opponent i think that's well known does that 
impact you at all in, on your side of the court? And when you're down 4-1 in the third set against her, is there are there any of those sort of dark thoughts of, I, I can't climb back or uh, this is going to be the end for me? Well, um, I mean, you're not going to lie to yourself. <laughs> Obviously, you know that you're losing 4-1, but the only thing you can do is just try again. And at that point, um, you kind of know that you may lose and you can actually relax a little bit more because you know that, okay, probably I'm going to lose, so, you know, I don't care anymore. <laughs> and then it's easier. So um, sometimes it, it works like that, but um, it doesn't change the fact that I just kept trying, you know. I kind of accept that I'm not going to only have this, you know, motivational and positive thoughts. Uh, but when I go and start the rally, I am, you know, still, well, I hope most of the times I have the same kind of intensity, you know. But, yeah, for sure it impacts the fact that she's so intense. I think it will impact anybody because um, she just, you know, she's, she's playing really fast. And, um, like, sometimes it felt like she's even, like, closing her eyes and really hitting just through the lines, you know, and there was nothing I could do. But still, um, as I said at the beginning, I, I was kind of sure that she she's going to have trouble maintaining that level throughout the whole match. Okay, we'll do four more. Ben, John, Vani, Aki. Ben? So it's a two-part question. The first, you just beat a former champion and a former finalist to make the th only the third round. So how proud are you of getting through this very tough uh, first couple rounds? And then second, uh, Danielle said during her press conference, this is going to be her last year on tour. I'm curious what you think of that and sort of your memories of, of playing her. You had some big matches against her in your career. I, I didn't know that she she's planning to retire, so... <clears throat> Yeah, we, we played so many, you know, tight matches that, um, well, they were hard, so I don't know if I'm going to miss that, but for sure she showed, you know, great tennis and, you know, really great passion and determination, so um, so I, I know she's not done yet, but for sure I'm going to congratulate her for her whole career, you know. And uh, the draw, well, it was tough, um, and it happens, you know, I think it was even like the toughest one I ever had, maybe even more than when I was unseated, you know, a couple of years back. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm proud to survive this and already thinking about, you know, the next goals. John? Further to Ben's question, which was going to be my question also about the draw, does any part of you feel like the third round after two challenging opening matches like that might be a little bit less intense for you to then move on and start thinking about the rest? Uh, sorry? I feel like the third round for you might be less intense and give you a chance to think about something further down the track. Well, no, because I don't know how Linda is going to play and how the match is going to look, so I, I'm ready for every match kind of to be intense. Uh, obviously, sometimes it's more intense with players that are, you know, having different s styles, but she's also playing, you know, really good and really fast, so... I'll be ready, and um, I don't mind, actually, that it was intense because I remember also when I started the tournament with some easy matches, then I felt I had trouble. I was a little bit rusty when the tough moments came, you know. So, honestly, every Grand Slam, like, the path can look really differently, but at the end, I, I, I came to the conclusion that it doesn't really matter. You just have to be ready. And, I mean, on the US Open in 2022... I also had trouble, you know, and I think it was the third round um, against uh, Yule, so um, I guess every night nice semifinal as well, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. Okay. Danny? Just what you said earlier, the fact that you, you can't really plan to improve something on the one hour a day that you play. Is it, uh, if you get to the beginning of a tournament and you realize that it's not the setup that you would like, do you just say, okay, this is it, I'm going to have to get to the end of the tournament this way, or you still can try or want to try to do something to oh, get the improvement? I will always try, you know, and actually I'm usually wanting to try even too much, you know, and the team is like, you know, keep it easy, keep it, like, cool. Um, if you're going to kind of just try and try, th these things may improve, you know. But I think, um, like any champion would say to you, that basically probably like most and 
most of times they haven't felt you know comfortable throughout the whole two weeks you know of the Grand Slam. So we've seen many tournaments where I mean Novak, I, I haven't seen him play, but it seemed like he's not winning too easily, you know. So um, he's also that kind of person that probably improves during the tournament and uh, is able to do that. I also you know saw Rafa on some tournaments doing that. So. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, take an example from that and not panic too early. <laughs> I also remember I I also struggled a couple of times during Grand Slams on the first rounds, and then um, I won Ron Carlos like that. I won US Open like that. So, um, yeah, but I always try to improve it. But as I said, during one hour practice, there's not much you can improve. Probably it's probably just in your head, and yeah. Okay, last one. Now. We have talked about your new serve quite often, but uh, I also think that you changed the way you return. So uh, maybe you used, used to bend your knees more deeper. Um, I think it's fluid. Yeah. You are changing or not? <laughs> no, sometimes I, you know, uh, we're playing throughout the whole year, so it may change a little bit, and sometimes it's hard to keep the same technique uh, when I haven't had time, you know, to practice some stuff. Um, but usually, yeah, I would say I returned, you know, like when I got down and then up a couple of tournaments, but usually my return is better when I stay at the same level with my head and, yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to kind of work on that, but there's so many things to work on that. <laughs>